This is today's health and wellness podcast for March. This is Brett. And I'm Ashley. It's March and spring is in the air. And my family and I are ready for it. My family and I are right there with you. March's articles look really interesting in the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine. And we have some really interesting podcast extras as well. Our guy on the street, Mark News, got to talk with Adam Turner from Sleep Outfitters. He's going to give us the inside scoop on why yawns are so contagious. And Mark recently interviewed Chuck Gehring, president and CEO of Life Care Alliance in Columbus. Did you know there are only three Meals on Wheels programs in the country that offer a program seven days a week with no waiting lists? And they've got a ton of other programs, including a recent merger with Central Ohio Diabetes Association. That is amazing. Hey, and we have the Trevors from Elite One Fitness here again for our monthly fitness training update. Hey, we better get started. Yes. Welcome back to today's health and wellness podcast, guys. We have the Trevors from Elite One Fitness. How are you guys doing? Good, Ashley. How are you doing? Great. Good, good. Happy to be here. Glad to have you back. Always a good time. We're excited. We got some good stuff for you today. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we got some common fitness and health myths that we're going to kind of talk about and either you know dispose of or give credibility to or just kind of expand on them a little bit and kind of help you guys kind of see through um, – different things that have been passed down inside the gym, mm-hmm. inside the fitness clubs, um, or just word on the street. And, uh, you know, a lot of times it could be false information and we just take it as the truth because it's what we hear. So the first thing, um, we're going to talk about is this is a big one we hear with women. Women say, I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get big. Is this true? Is this a myth? Um, what, what's your take on this, Trevor? This is a huge myth. So When we talk about women, they don't have the testosterone to put on that natural bulky size like they think they do. Mm -hmm. Um, So we see it a lot with a lot of our clientele where they say, well, you know, I'm I'm not going to get big, am I? That's the first thing I said to you guys. Exactly. You were absolutely right. Yeah, it is. (laughs) I did. Yeah, we had to to stump that right away. Um, And and just for the record, Ashley's been training with weights and weight-resistant training for quite some time now. And she is all of a soaking wet hundred and. 18 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, so she can you kick don't your have, butt. But no. that's right. <laughs> she she is very strong. I'm, I'm, yeah, not, that's that's right. Right. I'm not going to lie. That is, there's a lot of validity to that. You, <laughs> you are very strong for your size. So anyways, go ahead, Trevor. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Oh, no, no, you're fine. I was just saying that, um, that we don't, you guys don't necessarily have the testosterone to put on a lot of size. Um, and with that being said is your training method and module always dictates that as well. Um, You know, when you're training, you're doing a lot of high reps, high intensity, you're not going to put on a lot of size and a lot of muscle mass. So therefore, as you train too, make sure you're training in a way that is going to dictate the body in the direction you want to go as well. Yeah, definitely. So that's one, you know, don't be afraid to pick up those weights. Um, You're not going to be able to put on that bulky mass bodybuilder size that you're scared to do. What you're going to do is you're going to be able to tone up some lean muscle but and also burn calories and melt away fat at the same time. So that's just a big myth. Um, I don't want to get big and bulky, so I don't want to lift weights. Go ahead and toss that one aside. Start picking up some weights. Don't be afraid. And uh, we can uh, finally see those results that have been eluding you for so long. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Can you burn more calories doing weightlifting often? Most definitely. Right? Yeah. Than so just you, the normal cardio? Yeah. Right. If you look back into our first... Uh, segment of the podcast um that's also hosted if you guys haven't got a chance to listen to that check that one out as well we talk about the epoch and the afterburn effect and weights just really dip into yeah the epoch right the epoch is back (laughs) you uh you dip into a lot more muscle fibers and you recruit a lot there's a lot more muscle recruitment and the more muscles you recruit the more energy expenditure you're going to have so the more calories you're going to burn So, yeah, especially after the workout. It's all about exhausting your body. And when you're able to fire those muscle fibers like that, you're going to pull energy sources to exhaust that body out. Definitely. That's a good question or a good statement, I guess. Um, We've trained you well. (laughs) (laughs) No pun intended. That's right. I'm so punny. That's lame. That's lame. That's good. That's good. That's so funny. We're going to take a poll. I think people enjoyed it. Oh, gosh. Um, Okay, so (laughs) 
Trevor, I want to add lean muscle mass to my body. I want to, uh, you know, I really want to try to, maybe the word bulk up isn't necessarily the best for everybody, but I definitely want to put some good lean muscle on my body. Look aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, should I just lift super heavy? Is that how I'm going to, the heavier I lift, the bigger I'm going to get? Well, see, I'm, I'm glad this is one that's on here because growing up and uh, going to a bigger box gym, that was yeah. one thing I heard all the time. I'd always ask even the trainers around the area, well, you know, I got to I gotta do this and that. And the first thing I say is just lift heavier, go heavier. <laughs> and that's not always the answer. You know, you want to hit that hypertrophy stage. And when yeah. you're talking about the hypertrophy stage, you're hitting more. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. But, you know, you're getting around 8 to 12 to 15 reps of exhaustion. You know, not necessarily hitting that two to three rep max where you're really getting a lot more strength involved in that. Right. Yeah. And I want you guys to kind of pick up on that. Like when we're talking about lifting super heavy, some people get caught up into um, doing a lot of um, exercises when it's close to their max, uh, maximum weight, their max effort. So if they're doing, if you're doing two to four reps, if that's all you can do because the weight is so heavy, yeah, you're going to get a lot stronger. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. You're definitely going to get a lot stronger, but it's not going to be advantageous for the aesthetically pleasing body that you're striving for. If that's your goal, you know, you're not going to be, it, it, that's not advantageous for putting on lean muscle uh, mass. You know, that's, that's better for becoming a lot stronger, firing the nervous system quicker, being more explosive. Um, like Trevor said, just reiterating that eight to 12 muscle or eight to 12 rep range is right there where we're going to engage those muscles um, effectively to really break them down just enough um, and still build muscle and everything. And, so. and granted, there is much more to it than that. And if you guys like to email us to go Definitely. over kind of like how we do eccentric tempos, pauses, stretches on the muscle group mm -hmm. and how we do that properly, you're more than welcome to email us or Facebook message us. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, we, we kind of stay in that rep range just because it's easy to pick up on. So without us going into too much depth, you guys understand what we're saying. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about the eight to 12 rep range too. That's not okay, I did eight reps, but I could have done 15. Oh, yeah. you know, get a weight to do eight to 12 reps, meaning that last rep, you can't get another one. Exactly. So yeah, that, that, I'm glad you said that because that was mm -hmm. my next point was 100%. You have to make sure you're using weight that's still heavy enough. Okay, so I don't want to say don't use heavy weights. We have to use heavy enough weights to where we're failing and we can only get to that eight to 12 rep range. If, we're, if, we, can, if we have the ability to get higher up in that 15, 20 rep range, then we're not using enough weight. If even even the ladies using heavier weights, so yeah. If the, if if they're talking about um, trying to add some nice lean muscle mass to their body, maybe they um, we Ashley over here want, loves to work out her arms and loves mm -hmm. loves those little nuggets on the <laughs> biceps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so there's nothing. Yeah. So there's definitely nothing. You know, like you said before, they don't have the testosterone to be able right. to really put on massive amounts of size. Um, it's 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 hard for someone like you and me. We work out work our butts off you know, every single day in the gym and it's hard for us to put on five pounds of lean mass. Right. You know what I mean? So, and, and we're males, you know, younger males with, you know, solid testosterone levels. Right. So when that, with that being said, kind of take that in consideration too, ladies. So I'm kind of bouncing back to the first one. So just kind of recapping, if you guys want to add nice lean muscle mass to the body, you're going to want to hit that eight to 12 range and make sure the weight is heavy enough to do so. But at the same time, we're not doing weights so heavy to where we're only hitting that two to four. Now, that two to four range is nice for building strength. Maybe that you want to do that every once in a while so that you can get stronger and use heavier weights to mm -hmm. in that eight to 12 range. Um, it it kind of helps it out there, but that's not what you want to pattern your workouts around. Yeah. So basically, going into the workout, you want to have a goal in mind exactly. and make sure you're working out for that goal. Mm-hmm. So yep. if you're if you're trying to cut up, you know, exhausting that muscle around fifteen to twenty to even thirty reps where you're hitting a max number that yeah. you can't get any more around there, um, is beneficial for exhausting your body and trying to really cut up. Definitely. So now, now moving on to the next question, kind of goes hand in hand with this one. Mm -hmm. If I want to like cut in and I want to lose some body fat, right? I want to, I, I want to. I've worked really hard with the toning the muscle underneath the layers of fat that I have on my body. I want to preserve that, you know, that nice solid muscle that I have underneath there. Um, if I want to cut in like that, should I eat like the food pyramid tells me to eat that we all grew up learning about? Um, no, actually one thing is 
in schools nowadays, they're actually teaching a totally different method, and there's right. a big reason for that. With the food period pyramid, not yeah. pyramid period yeah. pyramid, uh, <laughs> the food with the food pyramid, <laughs> they uh, they have carbohydrates as the main intake, and as we get smarter and smarter with our body frame correct. and knowing how our body responds to things, that is not correct. Um, right. Especially as you know, a lot of us are living more of a sedentary lifestyle than what we used to live. Uh, you know, you mean video games and, and computers are making us slow down? Yeah, isn't that crazy? No, that's <laughs> right. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we're not as active as we used to be. So all those carbohydrates, which are energy, um, are not being utilized when we're eating them. So when we don't utilize them, what do they do? They store as fat. Exactly. So, you know, really keeping that in mind is we want to eat more protein, exactly. less carbohydrates, Definitely. less fats. Right, yeah. So there it is. You know, we the, the food pyramid is so heavily based on those carbs at the bottom of the food pyramid. Um, yeah, well, but what about the food period? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know much about that. Okay, all right. I don't know much about that one. You're going to have to enlighten us on that. <laughs> so, yeah, you definitely want to cut out some of those carbs. I mean, you you know, um, if you want a nice advantageous um, way of cutting in, keep preserving muscle, you're going to have to take in more protein. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, that doesn't mean we – just take in more protein and keep the same amount of carbs as well because what's going to happen is now we're going to be over in calories. So we have to kind of move calories around and, and switch them around a little bit. But but won't protein store as fat as well? No. So we're good on that. We, we Protein is, is the most thermogenic macronutrient in the body. Right. You know, so we're going to be good on that. And protein, don't have to worry about getting fat off protein, guys. As long as our diet's in check with the carbs and fats, we're going to be good. Mm-hmm. So we're going to kind of flip it a little bit. We're going to put more protein at the bottom. Um, a high protein diet is going to be really advantageous for um, sparing muscle, preserving muscle, and then also losing weight. Um, then we're going to go into a little bit less of a carbohydrate intake. Um, you still want some carbs. Um, this is something that we're going to touch on in the next one. And the next question, you still want some carbs, but then um, still low amounts of fat. But also on a, on the food pyramid, we talk about dairy. And I'm, I would advise anybody who's wanting to really – lose weight and cut in to definitely consider cutting out most of their dairy in their, in their diet. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, just going to the store and getting 2% fat milk, you know, there's still fat in there and there's still 12 grams of sugar. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? per, yeah. Per serving. Per serving. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And I know, I know when I drink a glass of milk, it's not eight ounces. <laughs> <laughs> a glass of the jug of milk. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. yeah so, so just, uh, that, that food pyramid isn't always the best thing to kind of go off of. It's so generic and so just general, generalized and like trevor said they're not even really using that and teaching that anymore so in in schools so be careful uh following that if that's what you're using for your for your weight loss and diet pro tips um interesting yeah yeah so the next thing uh should i eat zero carbs trevor to lose weight like i want to people are telling me i need to eat no carbs at all and that's going to help me lose weight that's a tricky one and the reason yeah. for that being is Right off the bat, you probably will cut some weight. Right. But in overall, in a long period of time, when we talk about our body, it's in a duration. So if you were to cut out your carbohydrates in the first couple of weeks, you might lose weight. Mm-hmm. But once you go back, you're going to put that weight right back on. Fast. Fast. And yep. it's going to be even more than you had on before. And a big reason for that being is your hormone levels as well. Yeah. So if your leptin hormone levels that are going to be that need carbohydrates to run on, when you don't have those carbohydrates in there, those leptin levels are going to shut down. Yeah. And that's a fat burning agent as yeah. well. So yeah. So basically, just kind of recapping what Trevor said, the the first thing he said was he's kind of getting at um, is it sustainable? Is it sustainable right. to run zero carbs? You know, throughout is that a lifestyle or is that just something you're going to do for? That's with be- so many. Yeah. Right. Diet and eating plans. You, and, know, you and, have to think. Can I really do this exactly. for a long exactly. period or for a lifestyle? For a right. lifestyle, right. absolutely. Yes. That's that's the thing with that ash is a lot of these diet places, um, or I'm sorry, diet plans are 30 days ran. So when you're doing something for 30 days and you cut out carbohydrates completely, yeah, you're going to drop weight in 30 days. But what's going to happen after those 30 days right. that you really yep. need to think about when we do those quick diets like that? Yeah, you know, whenever we do a diet, it's or a, uh, or a 30 day challenge, anything like that. It's a great Kickstarter, but we need to make sure we do it as a Kickstarter to have longevity behind it, not just run it and stop and go back to our old habits. Cause we're not just going to go back to where we were. We're going to be worse than where we were. Yeah. Right. That rebound effect is going to kill us. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. The rebound, double rebound effect. Um, and so then with, uh, eating zero carbs and, um, 
you talked about the leptin levels. Leptin is a fat burning hormone, and you're that's going to slowly come to a halt. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to be producing the leptin that you once did. Your metabolism is going to slow down, um, and so there's just a lot of uh, negative things to when when you're going zero carbs. Your metabolism, um, you're going to have some metabolic damage, and that's something for another co- topic and conversation that we could talk about for for a long time is metabolic damage. But the last thing we want to do as trainers is to give you, hey, here's this diet plan, and follow this to a T. You're going to lose so much weight in 30 days, and people are like, oh, man, this was great. He knew what he was talking about. Yeah, but what you didn't see was the next 30 days that – me as a, a professional set you up for failure right. once you start really gaining right. it back. And it's just not safe practices. And the thing is, too, is what kind of weight are we losing? Are we losing muscle mass or are we losing fat? Yep. You know I mean, we're, we're at that right. point where our body recognizes that we're not taking any carbohydrates. It's going to keep a hold of some of those fat cells as energy because it doesn't know where our energy is coming from. So that's something to really think about, too, mm-hmm. is body composition, not necessarily what the scale says. Yep. So I'll just say as a caveat, like as a little like disclaimer as well, that a ketogenic diet will... Um, is something that uses zero carbs, but it's so specific in its fats intakes and its um, <clears throat> protein intakes that it's very, very hard to set up and follow. You have to be really well planned out and organized in order to make sure you sustain a ketogenic diet or else you won't ever actually hit ketosis. So that's something for another time as well. But so I just wanted to say that there is a way to do it successfully with mm-hmm. zero carbs, but it's very few can, can can actually pull that off, right. and it's expensive. It's, I mean, it's expensive. a very expensive diet to run. So, um, so let me see here. Let's go with. Let's pick one more here. We have we have a list, but we'll just pick one more. How about we go with? This goes hand in hand with that, Trevor. Okay, I'm your client. I have been. I'm coming to you, and I'm like, hey, I'm just not losing any more weight. You ask me what I'm doing. I tell you, I'm working out about the same as I have been, but now I'm at, uh, I'm eating, I'm only eating 800 calories a day, Trev, uh, and I was losing weight for a while, and now I'm just not losing weight anymore, but I'm not eating very many calories. I mean, wh- why, why can't I lose weight? See, this is a great one to bring up because I actually had a, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually had a client uh, ask me about this yesterday and was talking to me about cutting so many calories for this diet coming up, <clears throat> and I told him immediately that was a bad idea. One, he's a bigger guy. Um, you know, broader guys, about six, two. And secondly, when you cut your calories that low, you have nowhere else to go. And again, we talk about storing fat as energy Mm -hmm. and our body does it as a survival response. Right. So we're trying to survive and your body recognizes that you're only taking in this much food. It's going to store and hold on to those fat cells for use when you need them most. So, so basically just piggybacking on right, right there, what you said, right. Um, you're as a survival mode, like Trevor says, you're going to – your body's going to say, metabolism, slow down so I'm not burning as many calories. Right, mm-hmm. okay. which is the last thing we want. Right. right. That's why, you know, we are big advocates of breakfast too. You know, when you when you skip those meals and stop those mm-hmm. meals, you know, your metabolism is a water wheel. Mm-hmm. And any time that you don't fill that energy source mm-hmm. up to keep that thing moving, it's going to start being sporadical and stopping and, and going. Yeah. So, so, and like Trevor said, you know, once your metabolism comes to a crawl because – you're trying to survive. Basically, your body's going in survival mode. You know, you can't burn calories to lose fat. Your metabolism is gone. Right. So, uh, the thing is, too, Trev, is so, all right, so we're at 800 calories. We lost 10 pounds, but yeah. our goal is to lose 20. And then we just, we're, we're hitting the threshold. We can't lose anymore. Where we go from where, there? where are we going to go? We're going to go to 600 calories? Right. Yeah. We, 400 right. calories? Are we, what, yeah, what are we doing after yeah. that? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's why when we, whenever we start to back off our calories, make sure you do it in a slow, methodical way. Yep. You know, start with 200. Then bump down from there, and then bump down from yep. there. You know. And then again, how long can you sustain? That? Exactly. Just like you're exactly. saying, like how long can you really go and only eat? Exactly. So the best hundred calories, exactly. or whatever it is. Yeah. A day. I mean, there's going to be a point where yeah. it's like. Amen. Right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we're so in tune to the short-term effects. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. That I want to lose it now. Because mm-hmm. you, you hear it, especially the turn of the year yep. resolutions, getting ready for, mm-hmm. you know, the the, the bathing suit season for spring right. break. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that short-term. Your goal right. is spring break, mm-hmm. or you know, hitting the beach in February, March. And then you right. think right. I can but do what happens anything after like that? that for thirty days? Right. Exactly. Get in that mindset. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And if, right. if you really are that person that only cares what you look like in your bathing suit. Remember, body composition. It's not what the, exactly the scale says. It's our body composition as well. So we actually ran a 30-day challenge, and we had a lady lose one pound, 
but she lost five inches in her waist. And that's, wow. that's huge. That's a big that's difference. Huge. So you talk about body composition. That's, yeah. that's just completely a, a it. complete transformation, yeah. you know, yeah. L- looks completely different. Right. You, can, you can see it. And what really right. matters there, what are we talking about? You know, what really matters? Body composition matters over weight. Yeah. Oh, big yeah. time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the reason, cause you've heard it so many times, muscle weighs more than fat. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> thinking the same thing. Exactly. It's what we tell our kids, right. like, don't worry. You know, if you're, right. if you're exercising and you're playing mm-hmm. sports and such, but you're still feeling, you know, yeah. getting the teased or big is like, uh, it doesn't matter. Muscle right. weighs more than it does. fat. Right. You're fine. Yeah, yeah, the, right. the scale's yeah, deceptive. Right. The mirror never lies. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Um, so just kind of recapping just real quick there on the low calorie. So what is the solution in order so that I can keep losing weight but not overeat calories? So the solution there would be, one, we got to keep our metabolism high. How can we do that? We can do that in two ways. We can keep our metabolism high by working out regularly mm-hmm. and having a nice fitness program and having great personal trainers like Trevor and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's key. That's key, though. So, so keeping your – Yeah, right? So having uh, – Having a good fitness plan. So you have to – the fitness side of things keeps that metabolism ramped up, keeps everything in in high gear. Now, the other way to keep your metabolism running and firing on all cylinders is to eat enough calories to where your body doesn't go into starvation survival mode. Okay? And that – and way we can do that is – we can kind of – we eat more protein. If we – we can eat a ton more protein, which takes our overall calorie number up. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we can still keep our carbs and fats nice and low like we did before with our silly 800 calorie diet, right? Right. But say we add another, you know, 100 grams of protein a day, you know, there's an extra 400 calories right there that we just upped our protein and our, can, our overall. And can cut out of our carbohydrates. Yeah. So instead of right away just dropping your carbs and or dropping your calories and eating whatever you want, um, change what you're eating. Change yeah, the, the lifestyle of, of what you're eating. And you'll be amazed at what that does yeah. to your body. Yeah. So long story short, guys, keep that metabolism high, work out regularly, eat the right types of food, eat enough food, but uh, eat smart. So, yeah. And like we said, guys, if there's anything you want us to expand on, we're more than happy to do so. Just message us on our Facebook page, Elite One Fitness, or you can email us at EliteOneFitness at gmail.com. With us is uh, one of our old friends, the president and CEO of Life Care Alliance. Chuck Gehring is with us. And uh, Chuck, thanks so much for coming in today. Well, thanks for having me. You put an emphasis on old there. <laughs> old friends. Long time. <laughs> long, time long time friends. Friend. Okay. Let's, let's put it that yes, way. Yes, okay. For those who have never heard of Life Care Alliance or they've heard of it, they're not sure what it is. Tell us a little bit about exactly what Life Care Alliance does these days. Well, our main mission is to serve seniors and medically challenged through nutrition and health care. We're the big Meals on Wheels provider. In fact, we're one of the three largest in the country, and we're the only one in five counties. So if you're listening to this, we're in Franklin, Madison, Champaign, Logan, and Marion. But we also uh, do home health care. Uh, nursing. We have wellness centers. Uh, We've taken on the Columbus Cancer Clinic uh, in past years through a merger 12 years ago, believe it or not, the oldest free cancer clinic in the United States of America. We have Project Open Hand, which assists um, uh, those with AIDS in our community in a nutrition program and other such things. And we've got a new project now. And tell us about Yeah, tell us about the new project. Well, we just took on uh, the Central Ohio Diabetes Association. They're 52 years old. They're a wonderful organization, one of the most respected organizations in Central Ohio. And they chose, and and we wanted them, to, uh, and they chose to merge into Life Care Alliance. So that happened. Uh, We signed the papers the end of January and just announced it the the 1st of February or so. So uh, it's, it's brand, brand new. And Central Ohio Diabetes does three main things. They do detection services, so you've probably seen them around the community uh, checking you out uh, with a drop of blood to see how your glucose is. Very important. You know, uh, uh, so many people as they age and become more sedentary develop diabetes. In fact, about 60% of the Meals on Wheels clients we have have diabetes, believe it or not. Mm So it's a super thing. Secondly, they do a lot of health education to help people uh, learn how to live with diabetes, which is uh, very critical, especially with youth. 
Uh, they, you know, a lot of kids get diagnosed at a very early age, so it's important that they learn how to manage it. Diet and exercise are the key things. And then the third thing they do, which is celebrating a 50-year anniversary this year, is, is summer camp called Camp Hamwi. Uh H-A-M-W-I. And that is up. uh, They take the kids uh, from all uh, backgrounds and all economic circumstances, and they go to camp for a week or two. And uh, they learn basically at ages 7 through 17 that they're not alone, that they are not the only people with diabetes, and they're not the only people carrying little bags, uh, refrigerated bags to school with them and things like that so that they can uh, get their insulin or whatever it might be. So what a wonderful thing. Uh, They like all our programs. Uh, service people. We're not researching. We're not trying to cure anything because we can't. Uh, we do try to prevent as much as we can, and we we really work hard to prevent these these situations. But the trick is that we really want to be able to help people through it. Uh, diabetes, like cancer, AIDS, and many other health issues that we take care of at Life Care Alliance, are debilitating financially to uh-huh. people. Yes. When you get them and you can't work or something changes in your life like this, if you're on the edge anyway, you are really on the edge. And one of the things we're very proud of at Life Care Alliance is that in the 15 and a half years that I've been hanging around the place, uh, I will tell you, we've never had a client that we are aware of that has had to go into a homeless situation while they were under our care. And that's something we're very, very proud of, and we think that's very important. On the diabetes side, with, with CODA, as they're known, Central Ohio Diabetes Association, shorten it up to CODA, as opposed to COTA, the bus, CODA, diabetes, uh, I would tell you that um, uh, it's, it's just critical that we get to the folks. It's something that can be prevented. There's been a lot of studies and a lot of results lately. Mm -hmm. That people that are on the cusp, now you can't always prevent it because if your body's not making insulin, it's not making insulin. But if you can, if you properly eat and you do proper exercise, weight loss, things like that, you can really uh, prevent the need for these drugs and stay off. People have been on insulin, have gone off insulin in some cases. So it's not a universal cure, but it's really something that can be prevented. And that's what I think Life Care Alliance is all about, preventing the need or preventing the hospital stays, preventing homelessness, things like that. And uh, we're very uh, fortunate to add them, and we think they'll be a great uh, addition to our programming for our clients and their clients too. So, Chuck, with Life Care Alliance uh, now helping not only Meals on Wheels, but cancer patients, AIDS patients, people with diabetes, uh, there is a great need for volunteers, as you mentioned. So yeah. what what type of volunteer work is available for yeah. people who want to help? And just to be clear, while we've taken on these other agencies that are specific to those diseases, we have, a, every, we have one of everything. In fact, I have learned over the years about diseases I never knew existed. Yeah. There's one called Turner's Syndrome. I'll just tell you, we have a client with that, which is locked joints. It's very advanced arthritis. And look it up. It's unbelievable. And the the debilitating nature of this. So we have one of everything, but we need volunteers. The big thing is delivering meals on wheels. You can do that. If you're a business listening to this, uh, it's one of the great employee retention and attraction tools out there. And I can prove it to you if you call me and I'll talk to you about it. But it's unbelievable. You let a couple of employees go out at lunchtime while they were going to go out anyway and deliver meals. You deliver them around your business. It's phenomenal. Uh, We are the only Meals on Wheels provider in the state of Ohio still delivering 365, not just Monday, most are Monday through Friday. So if you want to deliver on the weekends, you can take your family, you can take kids. I'll tell you, kids just love it. Go on with parents and grandparents. It's a fun thing to do. I always tell people on the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, or holidays, what a great thing to do for a date if you're looking. It costs you nothing but a little time. And guys, the guys listening out there, you will be a sensitive new age guy if you take your your friend uh, with you on a date to deliver meals on wheels. You will get a lot of points for that. But uh, we need people like that. We also need people to come and work on our pantry, which is specific to our pantry is the weird one in the middle Ohio food bank system. You have to have active cancer, active AIDS to use it. 
We have people come down and help at client events because we try to do things for our clients constantly. Uh, we just had a Valentine's Day party that was unbelievable uh, for our folks and uh, some of our clients. We bring them in. So there's a ton of volunteer. You can work front desks at screenings. You can do all kinds of stuff. And CODA, Central Ohio Diabetes Association, always needs nurses and dietitians to work the summer camp for kids. Well, Chuck, we are completely out of time. So once again, uh, with the time we have left, uh, give us the phone numbers, not only if you need your services, but if say, if somebody wants yes. to volunteer. If you need a service of some uh, point uh, part or you just want to see what's out there, you call 614-278-3130 or go to lifecarealliance.org. If you want to volunteer, you can call that number, but please call the volunteer hotline, which is 614 614- Four 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 meal M E A L and uh, we appreciate if you do get a an answering machine somebody does call you back pretty quickly. What a blessing to have them in our community, Life Care Alliance. Chuck Gehring, CEO and President. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. Well, we always like to include our pets in today's health and wellness podcast. This month. March 22nd is National Puppy Day, which um, it's it's, it's a turnaround in regards to saving a puppy rather than getting puppies and getting all excited about puppies Mm -hmm. and breeding puppies. It's actually saving a puppy from uh, the puppy mills, from Mm -hmm. the pet stores and such like that. So Puppy Day founder and pet lifestyle expert Colleen Page encourages you to adopt a new furry member on March 22nd. If and if you can't to donate five dollars to your local shelter, which I think is a great idea. That's great. So, Definitely. Yeah, it's again encouraging not to 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 go to you know the national pet changes which have a tendency to do the uh, the puppy mill yes. situation. So, and if you have to go that direction, do some investigation, find out if that store is doing the puppy mill stuff, um, mm-hmm. and, and and maybe look at some other options. But yeah, you know the local shelters have tons of dogs and exactly. cats available. I know um, that. I know that if you go and talk to <clears throat> Most any vet clinic that you go to, they're a big proponent of yeah. adoption because there's just so many there are good so dogs many. and yeah. pets out there looking for a good home. Um, you know, not that I don't want to say speak on the breeders' side of things, right. but well. you know, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of good animals looking for good homes. I think it's an option you need to inf- explore. Yeah, at least look at. Right. And it may take a little bit longer when you go to the shelters because that that dog you want may not be there yeah. or the maybe the um the type of dog that's going to fit into your home. Yeah. Because I know uh the lifestyle. You know, sh- yeah, the shelters do a really good job in explaining, you know, it's good with kids, not good with kids and right. such and, mm-hmm. and and you may be looking for a certain breed size-wise mm-hmm. or hairy and short hair whatever. Mm-hmm. So take your time rather than uh, you know going right into that certain breed. Probably they'll show up eventually at shelter, yeah, <laughs> you know. Exactly. But mm-hmm. but yeah, it can take a little bit longer at times. But it's well worth the wait. Uh, and our family is uh, living proof of that. It, yes. it takes some time to find what one we did, but we love him exactly. So, yeah. Other March related items: uh, Poison Prevention Week is in March as well. For, uh, it's the uh, third full week of March starting uh, with a Sunday, so that first full week but uh, of the uh, March 19th through the 25th. So good week to take a look around the home and, and get mm-hmm. rid of old poisons <clears throat> as well as make sure they're locked up. And that's a pet health thing too. Right. Making yes. sure that uh, what you got is, is put away and, and gotten rid of as well. Um, March is National Frozen Food Month. As Ashley mentioned a little bit earlier too, Nutrition Month. It's Peanut Month. Popcorn Lovers Day is this month. Uh, created oh, back in just 2000. 12, yeah, by Bob Matthews of Rochester, New York. It's Bob's favorite snack. He and his wife have it on most Thursdays all year long. So he <laughs> apparently got a hold of somebody and made it a national day. So That's right. uh, 14th of this month is National Potato Chip Day. Thanks, yes. <laughs> That's um, my day. Of course, Mark- but you won't be eating any. Oh. That's yeah. Right. yeah, you're killing me. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's I right. forgot. Yeah. Like, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So yeah. also now. March is <laughs> National Pie Day, and that's pie with P I. Exactly. So it could be a quiz. Oh, so how, how far? Cool. How far do you know pie? The number pie. Three point one four one five eight. He was a math major, by the way. Pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, I I had to write it down because I always forget. I I can go like about three into three. Three point one four. That's the most I know. Five, nine, two, six, five, three, nine. Yeah. 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 Odd infinitum there. Hey, it's also um, uh, National 
chocolate covered raisin day on the 24th mm. so if you think about it you Ooh. get your vegetable and your fruit at the same time so it's practically a health shake exactly because <laughs> the chocolate's a cocoa bean right. the raisins are grapes fruit that's right. <laughs> live it up uh, yeah. that's right uh the 25th is pecan day and did you know that um pecans are the only nut tree native to north america Really? I yeah. thought walnuts might have been, too. Mm. But pecans are the only one. No wonder so, no so, I love pecan pie so much. Yeah, yeah, all the other nuts. Not that I've ever had it. Came yeah. in the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not cheat day. I didn't ever, I never had it. Uh, the 25th is Waffle Day. Uh, the origin of the waffle dates back to the 1300s in Greece. They cooked flat cakes between two metal pans, and at the time they topped it with cheese and herbs. Hmm. Uh, syrup wasn't around. Yeah, a plaid That's pancake. Yeah, exactly. And the 26th, if you've ever wanted to make up your own holiday, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. do it on the 26th. What is it? Make up your own holiday. Make up holiday. your own holiday. You're what kidding would it me. Be? It's a close does, up shop. Does that mean that everybody has to follow my rules on my holiday? Um, it, I don't if, know. if your holiday is follow my rules, rules holiday, holiday. <laughs> there you go. Sign me up. Like, so yeah. like but you know, some people don't celebrate certain holidays, so, you know. No. Well, I don't I know if I would be celebrating that holiday. <laughs> Everyone named Trevor, it's fall my rule holiday. So there you go. Oh, you're out of luck, Scott. Oh, Sorry. Oh. So if you have an idea for making your own holiday, give us give us a text, give us an yeah, email. That would be fun. That's right. We'll, we'll put some contact sure. information in the podcast notes. Maybe we'll we'll include that down the Maybe road. Maybe we'll yeah. Quick uh, yeah. We quick fun ones, fact. We'll you you said about. the National Pie Day is coming yeah. up March fourteenth. Um do you know where the three point one four comes from? The number? Where? So if you have a, a circle that's a unit circle and one, you mm-hmm. know, the right. Yep. All the way around it, the circumference right. is three point one four. Whatever the measurement is, whether it's feet or meters or that something. I don't know. And so the all the way around is one. Huh. Or is three point one four. Three point one four. Okay. And more numbers. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and but then it, it, it so gets there is science and pi. There is science there is and science pie. and pie. Pie. That's right. <laughs> Looks like March will be another great month for the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine, Ashley. I think so, too, Brett. Here's what you can find in the March issue. Uh, To go along with the Trevor segment this month, um, I've got an article from Elite One that is lifting for strength or aesthetics. So kind of goes hand in hand with what they talked about earlier. Uh, March is also National Nutrition Month. A good article in there um, about all kinds of uh, nutrition items. It's called Put Your Best Fork Forward. Um, March is also National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Some great information about that. Uh, Sleep Outfitters always gives us entertaining articles and interesting articles. Uh, Booze versus Snooze is this Ooh. month. Ooh, interesting. Mm. Yes. My two favorite things. <clears throat> right. <laughs> It'll tell you a little about what's going on in your body and, and when you're sleeping, when you've had booze. First, yeah, a little okay. and too much. <clears throat> both. Gotcha. That's very interesting. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, that, that is. Yeah. It's, it's a good one. Um, also, uh, an, something interesting, an article, Losing Weight Never Tasted So Good. Uh, there's a coffee out now. Um, that's supposed to have a lot of nutri- nutritional value uh, and help lose weight. So check that one out. Um, Interesting. And you're going to keep the name of the coffee as a teaser. Yes, you've got to okay. pick, it, you up pick it up or get online it and out. read it. And I like you can it. Get all the information about right. it, like where it. to yeah. find Ooh. it if you like yeah. it. I do because Good I love stuff. coffee. Oh, yeah. I know most most Americans do. You got my cup what right they're here. saying. And the smell of it is just. Or most people, oh, I should say. Um. Also, something kind of neat, uh, not not necessarily health related, but for your health related for your lawn. Um, spring tips to develop and maintain a healthy lawn. Uh, Mattingly Landscape has given us some great pointers for that, and um, it's crazy. Spring is here. We got to start thinking about treating our lawns. Already. Thank God it is. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, and then one other one to note: March is also National Kidney Month. Uh, so there's a great six-step guide on protecting oh, man, yes. kidney health. Good. What, what were those first two that you mentioned? Those were pretty interesting. What did you say? The Put Your Best Fork Forward? Yes, Nutri- National Nutrition Month. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a great article. Yeah, very curious on that one. And then yes. the second one you said was about? 
colorectal oh, cancer. Yes. Yeah, that's preventable, treatable, and beatable. Exactly. Yes. Before right. it's too late. Before it's too late. Yeah. As with most things. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. We just get checked. Good. Well, you can find updates all month long on theblitz.com, 1039jackfm.com, and wmni.com. Um, the magazine's also available on the magazine's website in digital form, and the magazine's available around central Ohio in Kroger and doctor's offices. We are talking today with Adam Turner from Sleep Outfitters. And Adam, everybody yawns. Everybody knows yawns are contagious. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what yawns are, why we yawn, and why they're contagious. Uh, Hey, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. Okay, first of all, why do we yawn? Well, that's kind of been the the question that plagues us at night. You know, I I wondered that myself and did a little bit of research and uh, I was surprised to learn through article after article that there doesn't really seem to be a uh, one single clear cut and dry answer. There's not really a great consensus on <laughs> after all this time of all the weird problems we have in the world and solutions for them. We still don't really know exactly why we on. Uh, I think the number of posed there's about 20 reasons by scientists and scholars that they floated uh, as you know, reasons for why potentially we do yawn. Uh, There are a few points, however, that people seem to be generally on board with. You know, we might not know exactly why. We usually know why not, though. Uh, The most popular opinion that's been floated around is that it's tied to oxygen. You know, we yawn because we're tired. We need more air in our body. And that's actually not the case, it seems, based off a lot of recent evidence and studies that they've done on the subject. Um, people would assume that just because when we get tired at night, generally that's when, you know, we're yawning more, but it kind of makes sense the more you think about it when we're exercising, presumably when we need oxygen the most, uh, working out, doesn't seem like we're yawning at a greater rate then. So generally speaking, it's safe to say yawning is not tied to oxygen. Uh, that's one of the points that I came up in my studies. We're talking today with Adam Turner from Sleep Outfitters and...